third graders it's thursday and i'm so excited to start math with you today because can you believe it we are already at the end of our chapter about fractions and so today we're going to have a little bit of a review day um, and we're going to work through some different problems in your chapter wrap up your study guide in your student textbook 3b so go ahead and turn your textbook to page 158 and we're going to work through some of these problems today. I'm going to have you complete some on your own and then we're going to go ahead and get ready for our test tomorrow. So tomorrow for your test, I am going to be putting it up on Seesaw and then you are going to complete your test. There is not going to be a video math lesson tomorrow, okay? So don't worry about finding a video tomorrow on Friday. Just hit the assignment in Google Classroom where it says math test. Um, do that in Seesaw. Remember, you can type and you can draw on that and turn that in for me on Seesaw, okay? All right, guys, so let's go ahead and review today. You're gonna be on this page just so you know what it looks like so we're all together. And then we are gonna go ahead and do some as a group here in a little bit. So let's read through chapter wrap up our study guide. Understanding fractions, numerator and denominator. So we need to see that one sixth, this fraction would be written as one sixth. One ninth is written as one ninth. And notice we have a dash or a hyphen in between those two to separate them. We have one twelfth at the bottom there. Then we have one seventh, one tenth, one eighth, and one eleventh. Just get used to reading those, how to write different fractions. Okay, we also need to see that some fractions do make a whole, okay? Now, we haven't really talked too much about this but I want you to understand that if I have two fifths, oh, there's that green again, two fifths and I have three fifths, when I add them together, they're gonna equal a whole. Now I have not taught you how to add fractions yet, so let's do it this way. My denominator is five, right? So I am going to draw a circle and I'm gonna split it up into five equal parts the best I can. Okay, that is not equal, Miss Cantrell. Let's see if we can space this out a little bit more. Okay, that's a little closer. So we have five equal pieces. And so look at this, guys. If I have two fifths, Shaded purple, watch, one, two. There's my two fifths. Now I'm going to have my three fifths and I'm gonna shade those red, my three fifths. So here we go, we're gonna shade in the rest. One, two, three. Do you see now that my whole circle is shaded in? So this shows you that two fifths plus three fifths equals one whole. Now I am gonna show this to you guys. I do not expect you to know how to do this um, on your test tomorrow with adding them across like this, but because you guys are so smart, I just wanna show you. When you are adding and subtracting fractions, the first thing that you need to do is make sure that your denominators are the same. Judd, are your denominators the same on this problem? Yes, good job. Now, when they are, you know that you can go ahead and start your problem to figure out what your sum is. Remember, the sum is what, Beatrice? Good, it's the answer to an addition problem. So what I'm gonna do when I add fractions is I'm gonna go ahead and draw my line. Now it might get confusing because you might be thinking, oh, Miss Cantrell, five plus five is 10. Wait a minute, guys. 
do I have 10 slices here in the pie that we just did? No, I only have five, okay? I only have five slices. My denominator stays the same. So I'm gonna keep my five. Denominator stays the same. Everybody repeat that. Great. Now, my numerator is going to change because I did add my two slices plus my three slices and I got how many slices colored in in all, John Thomas? Five, good job. And remember I taught you that if you have a fraction that has the same numerator as the denominator, that also equals one whole, okay? Now, you are not gonna have to add fractions like this on your test tomorrow, but I want you to be aware of it because next year in fourth grade, you're gonna be adding and subtracting fractions just like this, and you're gonna have a little bit of a head start, okay? All right, guys, let's go ahead and take a look at the next part of our chapter wrap up. They just want you to get used to our terms that you guys already know, I know you do, that say numerator, let me make this a little clearer, numerator, the number of equal parts shaded, and your denominator, which is on the bottom, everybody say denominator. Remember denominator, nominator, nominator down. Remember learning about that? The number of equal parts the whole is divided into. All right. Now, equivalent fractions, you can use the bar model, which is what we talked about a few days ago, like this. You could use a number line, which is what we learned earlier this week, okay? You can also use multiplication and division, which we talked about last week and this week. So I suggest reading over those and looking at those today. And then here, we've also looked at comparing and ordering fractions with bar models and making sure that we have fractions that have the same denominators up here so that we can easily see it. Now here we do not have the same denominators. We have five, nine, and seven, but our numerators are the same. So we can go ahead and look at it that way by just creating bar models to show each of those fractions to figure out which one is less than, greater than, or equal to. And then down here on the bottom, you have your multiplying and your dividing with your um, multiples here. Oops. Your multiples here of one and three, which is two. That's a good one. And then your factors of six and 12, which are three. So you're dividing by three here. So guys, let's take a look at page 159. It's going to look like this. Okay, so using number lines and a benchmark of a half, they wanted you to look at four fifths and see that four fifths, four fifths is greater than, like if I had that as a bar, it's greater than just a half. Do you see that? So that's why they have this here. And then three sevenths, boop is less than a half. It's less than that half mark. So that's why they have this here. Okay, writing whole numbers as fractions. I do want you to see this. We have talked a little bit about this. So if I have, three, and three thirds, that is the same thing as one. That is the same thing as one whole. Because if I have a pie that's split up into three equal parts and I shade in three, because that's what my numerator says, I have my whole cookie shaded in. You see that? Now, what if, Miss Cantrell, my fraction is like this? zero over three. Well, let me draw my cookie again, and I'm gonna divide it into my three equal parts because that's what my denominator tells me to do. 
Now, ooh, what does my numerator say? Do I need to shade anything in? No. So that means that how many in this pie do I have shaded Beatrice? None, exactly. So my answer would be zero. I have zero parts of this cookie shaded. If I see a fraction, guys, this is a good rule to know, and I have a zero in the numerator, that's basically just saying that you have zero parts shaded, okay? You've done nothing here. All right, what about this? What if I have, hmm, the number two? All right, I have the whole number two. Whenever I have a whole number, I can put my whole number as my numerator, and I have one as my denominator, okay? This is the same thing as two, two holes, okay? So if I have one cookie and I have shaded in the two parts of the cookie, that shows me that I have, oops, that I have two, two cookies here, okay? All right, um, let's go ahead and do this. Let's take a look at the next one where it says finding fractions of a set using models. So we have six buttons in all. How many buttons are blue, John Thomas? Good job. Four out of six buttons are blue. Beatrice, how many buttons are not blue? So look at your purple and your yellow. Good, two sixths. All right, last question for Judd. What fraction of the buttons are round? Great, all six of them are round, so you would just write six over six, which is the same thing as what, everybody? Good, one whole. Okay. What I would like for you guys to do today is I would like for you to turn your textbook to page 160. It's gonna look like this, okay? And I would like for you to work through those problems and press pause. Okay. Really, really good job, guys. Um, take a look at the answers and make sure we have these. And then let's go ahead and turn to our next couple of pages, page 161 and 162. Go ahead and figure out what each of the green blanks would be for that and pause. Okay, for page 161, this is what we need to get as our answers. And for page 162, this is what we need to get for our answers. Okay, it's going to be super important that moms and dads and kids, you know, you can tell when something's a little bit tougher. I don't want you to get caught up in what we were talking about a little bit ago where we have um, doo -doo 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 -doo, zero over zero four. It's how that really equals a zero. We know that that's one. And I really don't want you guys to get caught up in that last one that we did where we had um, two 
equals two over one, which also equals four over two, which also equals six over three, okay? Um, I don't want you to get too caught up in that um, because you're not really gonna see too much of this on your test. I just want the kids to see it um, so that things start to look familiar next year as they're going into fourth grade. All right, so guys, make sure you've done your study guide, your chapter wrap up today. Make sure that we're good with that. Please reach out to me. If anything on the review was confusing or hard, and then tomorrow you're gonna log into Google Classroom, you're gonna go to math, and then um, just take a look at the little snippet that I show you for what to look for, and then you're gonna log into Seesaw and you're gonna complete your math test tomorrow, okay? Remember, you're not gonna see me tomorrow on video. Um, we're just, I want you to have as much time as you can for your math test tomorrow, okay? And then moms and dads and grandparents, try your hardest tomorrow. Um, I know it's hard, but try not to help as much as you can. Uh, that way I can really measure what the kids know, okay? Of course, help them with how to understand a question or what is it asking, because sometimes the wording can be confusing, but make sure to leave it up to them to find the answers, okay? All right, guys, happy Thursday, and I will see you Monday, but I'm going to kind of see you tomorrow for our test. Everybody's gonna do awesome, and I look forward to talking to you again. Bye, third grade.